morning, everyone. I want to share with you three of the most important uh, lessons about leadership that I've learned over my 25 years of leading, teaching, and learning through experiential education. But first, as an experiential educator at heart, I'd like to get you joining me in this, in this, in this thrilling talk that I'm going to give. So, I'm going to do an activity with you. In a moment, I'm going to try to get everyone in here to clap all at the same time. So I need you to stand up. I'm going to count to three. And when I count to three and when I say clap, I want you to clap. So hold your hands out like this. Ready? When, when I say clap, you clap. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> clap. You can sit down. You can sit down. Notice what happened. My actions had much more influence over you than my words. What I've learned time and time again as a leader and teacher of students in the classroom and on the trail is that our actions speak louder than our words. And that's my first lesson to you as a leader. Know that your actions speak louder than your words. So talk less and act more. Now, how we communicate with others, how we communicate with others is just as, if not more important than what we, than what we communicate to others. We know that servant leaders are adept communicators. Oftentimes, they follow what I, what I call, what I've claimed to, 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 to call, the biobalance of leadership. With two ears and one mouth, they listen twice as much as they talk. Sorry, give me just a moment. They listen twice as much as they talk. This is particularly important when we consider the, the fact that listening is a key component to leadership. I also want to share with you some of the work that I do as a, lead, as a, as a learning coach to illustrate this point. And I just remembered that I have slides to share. And a lovely picture up there. I don't know where that came from. So. As a learning coach here at ASW, I work with faculty every day to look at their data that they collect in their classrooms and to listen to that data. We look at your student reflection forms and the feedback that you give. We look at your MAP scores and your IB test scores. We look into that data to see and hear what it says to us. To become better at my work and to lean into that data even more, I read this book called Street Data, a, a Next Generation Model for Equity, Pedagogy, and School Transformation by Shane Safir and Jamila Dugan. In this book, Dugan and Safir tell us they talk about deep listening and the importance that listening plays when looking at data. They use the Chinese character for listening to illustrate this point. In the Chinese character of listening, we have the ear, the eyes, the undivided attention, the heart, and king. Here they remind us, they encourage us to open our hearts to what is said and not said, what we hear and what we see. And to use our undivided attention when listening to a person or a group to move them into the, the center or the king of our listening. When we pair this lesson with that biobalance of listening, two ears, one mouth, we start to, to figure out the essential role that listening can play when leading. So, our actions speak louder than our words, and listening is, is just as, if not more important than talking when it comes to communication. But how do we use those lessons to truly break barriers and lead with compassion? For that, I want to take you to the trail and tell you about a program that I started at a small independent school in Maine. For 15 years, I ran this program in two different schools, 
where we would take students for five days into the backcountry of the White Mountains of New Hampshire. Our outdoor curriculum was extensive. Through, we, we taught students the importance of leave no trace principles and how to, how to pack their pack and balance what's in there. They learned about nutrition and rationing. They learned about how to, how to choose routes and how to navigate with a map and compass. A map and compass. But more importantly, they learned about themselves and leadership skills about the group, what we called expedition behavior. Through this program, students were asked daily to journal about themselves, the group, and the places that we visited. We even asked them at the end of their time together while still on trail to teach many lessons to each other about those lessons that they learned. One of the most important lessons that our students learned was to lead from the back of the group. As time went on, the adults became observers and students stepped into the leadership roles. Often, our more eager students who want to become leaders were the ones who stepped in to the front of the, of the group with map and compass in hand, thinking they knew where we were going, and quite often, they were the least equipped to get us there. It was those in the back of the group, those who were observant and listening to how the group was moving, those who could see who was drinking or not drinking, who was talking to other people, who seemed to be eating or, or changing their behavior, who was dealing with a heavy pack, who had blisters to deal with, those in the back of the group that truly led and helped us to get to that destination. We made sure that everyone took some time at the back of, of our group to learn this most valuable lesson, to see what it feels like, to know how you lead from the back and, 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 the, and value the role that seeing the group, the trail, and the destination all at once can play in the way in which we move together as a group. Towards the end of our time together, we would share this quote with our students to help illustrate this. A leader is best when people barely know he exists. Not so good when people obey and acclaim him. Worse, when they despise him. But of a good leader who talks little, when his work is done, his aim fulfilled, the people will say, we did it ourselves. It's by Lao Tzu. We'd ask students to sit and reflect on that and talk about what it meant to them. Our students came to realize that when they were able to put the others in the group ahead of themselves, that was true leadership. I've got another activity for you. Go ahead, you've got to stand back up for this one. I told you this was going to be an experiential lesson. Take a finger, oh, it's really bright, look up at the ceiling and make a, a large clockwise circle with your finger, going from 12 to 3 to 6 to 9. Really big circle. Nice and big and slow. Keep it going in that motion. As you slowly do it, clockwise, 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 slowly start to bring it down so it comes down to your forehead. Keep moving it to your eyes, to your nose or mouth. Keep moving it. Now take a look as it comes down to your waist. What direction is it going? Thank you. What happens when you change your perspective? You can see something from a completely different angle. You can go ahead and sit back down. That's what we hope to do for our students when we, when we encourage them to move from the front of the, of the group to the back of the group, allowing them to see the entire trail ahead of them. And more importantly, to see how the group is moving and bring the group together to get to, the, to our destination all together. So, how we listen matters. 
listen twice as much as you talk and listen fully with your heart to who you want to listen to. Lead from the back. Those who lead from the back can truly inspire by bringing to others together and helping them to realize that they're doing something together that's greater than themselves. It's an incredibly powerful servant leadership lesson. And your actions speak louder than your words. I'd like to try the clap activity one last time, this time without talking. You can stay in your seats, but let's do it together. Ready? Well done. Thank that when they were able to put the others in the group ahead of themselves, that was true leadership. I've got another activity for you. Go ahead, you've got to stand back up for this one. I told you this was going to be an experiential lesson. Take a finger, oh, it's really bright, look up at the ceiling and make a, a large clockwise circle with your finger, going from 12 to 3 to 6 to 9. Really big circle. Nice and big and slow. Keep it going in that motion. As you slowly do it, clockwise, 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 slowly start to bring it down so it comes down to your forehead. Keep moving it to your eyes, to your nose or mouth. Keep moving it. Now take a look. As it comes down to your waist, what direction is it going? Thank you. What happens when you change your perspective? You can see something from a completely different angle. You can go ahead and sit back down. That's what we hope to do for our students when we, when we encourage them to move from the front of the, of the group to the back of the group, allowing them to see the entire trail ahead of them. And more importantly, to see how the group is moving and bring the group together to get to, the, to our destination all together. So, how we listen matters. Listen twice as much as you talk and listen fully with your heart to who you want to listen to. Lead from the back. Those who lead from the back can truly inspire by bringing to others together and helping them to realize that they're doing something together that's greater than themselves. It's an incredibly powerful servant leadership lesson. And your actions speak louder than your words. I'd like to try the clap activity one last time, this time without talking. You can stay in your seats, but let's do it together. Ready? Well done, thank you.